Okay, I record the page also, don't worry about that. I will put in the YouTube, okay. So, as I told you, web programming has two ways. So you can do a, a static page or dynamic. A static is with HTML, and dynamic can be, could be with PHP, Python, Java, and etc. C Sharp and other language. Uh, I can imagine some of you have some uh, experience in web programming. Uh, maybe you did in the Polytechnico or for yourself, I don't know, at home. Or you used Facebook, of course, all of you, I guess. So, you know web, <laughs> something about the web. So, um, also, to program in, in the dynamic way, which it means dynamic way, what does it mean? It means you need to change the content of the page maybe each second. You need to change the content of the page to the user. If I am, I am user A and she is user B, if she comes, she wants to see her profile, I have to see my profile. So, the difference. It is possible to create two static pages for me and for her, but it's not uh, good or it's not easy task for, us, uh, for, uh, for a portal of Polytechnic. If a uh, portal of Polytechnic wants to create for each person one page, it's not possible. So they have to think about some, something else. <coughs> what they are doing, they are doing a static page, a uh, dynamic page. So dynamic uh, web programming means they are using the program, programming language to help us to create a HTML page, what we want. So the end user, she's or he is seeing <coughs> the static page, not dynamic, he's not seeing PHP code, he's seeing HTML code, maybe some JavaScript, some CSS, something else for a formatting, but at the end, the format is HTML. So we have to use somehow, so in some way, the PHP, Python, and Java, C Sharp, etc., for creating HTML. There is a two way, actually, to create this type of, uh, let's say, program. You can do from scratch. So you can start to see, okay, I have uh, this language, PHP. Uh, I have to do what? I have to do this, 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 this. I have to create these steps. So you can write by yourself from scratch. There is, this is a way a lot of people do, and it's good, but it's not good for prototyping. It's not good at all for prototyping because it takes years to program maybe one simple page. Not simple page, but simple website. But there is another way using the framework. What does it mean framework? I know, some of you, you know what is the framework. Framework is a, is a, in the, in the program, is a, uh, let's say, some library, some packages, which you can use in your language, let's say Python, PHP, etc. you can use for accelerate your work, create a web page. So, it, give, it gives you some uh, ability to create a web form, sign up, register, connect into the database, and etc. So you don't need to write from scratch connection to the database. You don't need to create a, a web form, which is for the sign up to fill the things and send to the server and do something. You don't need to write from scratch these things. Today, at the end, we create a page with the field which you are sending to the web, uh, website and you are validating that data and if it's not validate you show to the uh, user the data is not validate please write like this so if you want to do these things in PHP from scratch or with Python from scratch you need at least maybe five six sessions to come here and follow the courses from Python and know how it's possible. But here, we don't want to do that because you want to do prototyping. You want to do fast prototyping. This is important for you. This is not your, uh, your objective to be a programmer like a, like a web programming 
you are an industrial engineer, we know. So we are trying to help you to do fast prototyping. So we have a lot of uh, framework for uh, web programming, which fast, etc. <coughs> A lot of people want to use this one. We are not going to uh, teach this one. And if you want to do it, I don't know if professor will accept or no. I know will not accept. But if you want to do it, we cannot help you. We are doing only flash. That's it. So please follow the course. And if you are doing other language or other things, please be aware we, are, we cannot help you. Uh, so, uh, okay. Oh, it's not working. So, okay. So, uh, in Flask, so why we are using Flask actually? Flask is a micro framework, which is a readable when you are you want to do something. It's not difficult. It's not. I'm not saying it's easy, but it's not difficult like that. Way. Like uh, like uh, other language, like Rollover in in PHP. I don't know how many of you you know PHP. Maybe if you graduated in Polytechnico, maybe you know something about PHP or Java. But it's not like that difficult, and it's not easy like uh, other language. And we are doing here model view control. We are saying to this MVC. So what does it mean? MVC, Model View Control. It means we, we created the page, the, <laughs> our program, in three layers, three specific layers, which we are not combining these layers together. We try to, uh, let's say, we try to keep everything in their place. Let's say, if you are using because of course we use a shimmer for some static part. So, but at the end, we will not use HTML in my controller or <coughs> my view. So what does it mean, view control model? It means view is a your UI. Anything that you are seeing in the web browser is a view. Anything. You are, And as you can see here, in the view, I, I, I put some references. It means user interface, HTML, or something else. It means Java, JavaScript, and others, or other things. Here, for creating HTML and view, let's say, we are using Jinja. Jinja is it's a web template engine which can help you for making your HTML dynamic. <coughs> controller, there is a controller in any type of programming language. And the controller, the responsibility of the controller is to do the condition. Any condition, if, else, sign up, sign in, is register or not register. These things is for only for console. Which here I will show you very, but I put a reference at the time for your controller. All the controller goes here. You should not mix your model, which is your, let's say, comes from your URL, here. You can write here, but don't mix inside the function. I will show you where. So, what is the model? Anything which is very general, it's your model. Exactly like a UML. You are creating UML, and it is a model. You take that UML, and you write some line in the Flask, and Flask creates for the UML model. And it creates for you also the database. You are not creating the database. You write your UML, 
by help of the flask language. It's very good because you can also uh, change whatever you want the thing is. If you do the old fashioned programming, always you need to change the database, then you need to change your connection, then you need to change your phone for everything you messed up. But here you don't need. And the model, in the model, you need to, uh, in the model we are using the SQL Alchemy, which is uh, one of the package, let's say not package only, because it's framework, but we are using as a package in the, in the, uh, in the plus. And uh, the responsibility is connecting to the database. Here we are using uh, SQLite, which you can use also MySQL, but please don't use other databases. Here the requirement is that's it. And you don't need to create a database. You write your model, model creates the database. This, it makes, and it creates the database. So, so we are not giving a uh, teach you how to create a database. You don't need to know. So that's it. So let's start. Uh, and this is inside the portal <laughs> if you want to download. Okay. <coughs> I don't know, is it one or yes? Why is that working? Oh my god. Okay, let's do from here. I don't know why it's not working. Okay. Okay, I gave you the information I gave you the information about the flask. It's the uh, flax book if you want to buy it. Uh, is in the Amazon, but uh, I will suggest you don't buy because every time the programming language is changing. So use the web uh, document. You can use it everywhere that you want. You don't need to pay for a book. Uh, and <coughs> this is a how you can create a, a plus, let's say, project. At the beginning, you need to, OK, if you use community version, you are not seeing this part. Which is not important, but I suggest you use not comment version, use the, uh, use the payment version one. As you can see here, it's a flask. You, when you choose the flask, you can write your location, where you want to stay, and you can choose the interpreter. 2.715 you are using, so you can choose 2.715. Then which template engine you are using, because they, uh, in the old version, they want Ginger 1 and Ginger 2. Ginger 2 is a little bit different. Okay. And there is a template folder. You can change the template folder. But if you are using the community version as a default, the template folder is this one. So you need to change in the, in the environment variable. But we are using the same templates, we put all our HTML here, then we call with Jinja this file. So keep in your, let's say, keep in your mind. Then, uh, okay, after creation of the, after you finish this one and you push this button, you will see this page if you use uh, the professional one. Does you don't use the professional one. You need to write these lines, or you can copy from the line, these lines in the in your in your page. Okay. Uh, okay. I will explain you line by line. Okay. As you know, and I I I, I can I I know. See, I told you. Uh, this line, it means from Flask, import Flask. It means import uh, this uh, package for me. So I can access to this package in my code, in my page. <coughs> then I will create an instance from this instance, I mean the object from this, this instance, which is a name. What does it mean name? This variable 
return to me what? Do you know? In a, each page of Python, there is a, some value. It's a, a Python. It's not the like, Python. This name, if you print name in your Python, only write one so normal page and write uh, print name. It will print you mail. So this variable is always in the first page of the main. So it's nothing else. So if you don't want to create this one, you can uh, avoid this part and then run app. Because why I am doing this? Because I would like to create all the all the functionality. Because I will create maybe many of these type of things. I will explain what it is. Many of these. So I would like to finish until here, then run it, then run the application. So it's important for me in this specific case. But sometimes you don't need it. I can imagine sometimes you are writing without checking I am in the main or not. Because sometimes you are writing many modules for your program. So if you I am in the module, I don't know, sign up, you should write here, you have to change the, in the, in the package, because you create it, so you have to change the package name to the sign up. Then you have to say, if I am the sign up, run this package. If I am not in the sign up, don't run this package. So this is important that you are doing the modular application. So this reason is important, and you are following this path of your thing in the right way. So here we create an object from the class. Then I did something like this. Well, okay. Python has a very, let's say, good advantage, which you can create a decoration as a decoration. What does it mean, decoration? Do you know? Did you? Uh, did I talk about decorator. No. <coughs> okay. Decorator adds some functionality to your object or function. So it means uh, it's not it's not like an inheritance uh, or adding some uh, things to the object. It's adding only the function to the object. Some function. So this this is up. So you want to change something to in this object in other language, you have to change, only can change some variable. You cannot add things to the object which is run, is off on the on the fly. So when you are creating an object, it's off. So it's a, you can change the color, let's say there is a color as attribute, you can change the color, you can change something, but you cannot add attribute because it's off. So you have to destroy this uh, uh, object and then add something. But here you can add when the object is up, when the object is created. So you create the object, then you add something to them. The creator do these things in the application. In this application. Uh, in so and we create we add route. What does it mean route? Route is for URL matching. And when you are writing Google Inter, you are seeing one page. But how Google manage this activity? Google receives the request from the client which you are. You are sending a, a slash, a slash, the first slash is index or main page, a slash to the Google, and Google will route for you that slash to something which is a search page. If you go to the Polytechnico, it's the same. But if you go to the, I don't know, the page of Portal, you can see, I don't know, Portal does something, a slash V1, a slash sign up or sign in. What does it mean this? It means you are requesting a slash V1, a slash sign in. So this new route. So when you visit the Polytechnico website, visit this activity, this request from you, it, it will route you to another page which is dedicated for logging. So 
you have to do this one also is here. So this one it means index. So show me the main page. You can show you everything that you want, but this one should be inside the web. Every type of website. If you don't have this, the website will show 404, which is a which is a this page is not found. So this one is mandatory to put slash. But you can create other other let's say page by yourself. You can uh, create a slash sign up, a slash sign in. So when a slash sign up, you will return to the user uh, what you want. The form for registration, form for signing, form for, for something else. So here <coughs> After decorator, the route decorator, you have to define the function which this function is returning in the hello world. This return will show to your page when you run the web, web, uh, website on you and this page. So until here, the website is not up. Until here, everything is preparing. You are preparing the web page. Here, you are checking if I am the main module or main folder, let's say main application, run for me the application. This is uh, exactly uh, what we can, let's say, uh, understand from this page. Okay. Okay, these are all the things that I told you. You are mapping, exactly. We are requesting the curator. The decorator which is returning this one. Only the difference here is I put H1. This is the HTML tag. HTML, which you have to study by yourself, I'm sorry, but you can ask me anything that you want when I'm here uh, about the HTML. But it's not very difficult. You can find a lot of uh, help, documentation in web about HTML. HTML page consists from many tags. Many tags. Some tags is for the for formatting, some tags for uh, function. So you have to only take care of which one you are using. But usually usually it's possible to read, possible to understand. Like form form tag, which is necessary when you are have you have form for that is a functionality tag in the HTML. But H1 is a formatting tag. H1 is with header one. It's very big. Make, make my phone very big. So and only to give you the information about this, when you are starting some tag, you have to end some tag. But automatically, <coughs> automatically the flat uh, and the patch arm uh, helps you to fix this problem. When you are starting H1, it, uh, when you return, it makes a slash H1. So it creates this thing. Don't worry about that. But here I'm returning the HTML, uh, the text with HTML tag. So I will return and I will see my hello world will be very big. On the page. So okay, only the, I forget to say about debugging mode. If you are, okay, you know what is a debug, I mean, how it can bug is a, you know, bug, and uh, it happened in the past when the in electronic engineer wants to create a transistor, but in that moment there was, there was no transistor. So they create uh, the lamp, it was a big lamp, like uh, each radio had a one big lamp to, uh, to <laughs> to generate a higher signal. So, in that moment, when they were creating the lamp, it was some bug passing inside the lamp, and it, they couldn't avoid this thing. And it, from the 10 lamps, they had to uh, throw it away two, three lamps. And from that moment, the debugging, debugging means finding the problem, it happened. So, they are doing everything correct, but something happens inside the thing. Also, here we are saying debugging. So, only when you are uh, developing 
something you need to, you need, it's necessary to activate the bike. Otherwise, you cannot understand what is the problem. Where you need to go forward and dig that part. Because if you don't know, uh, if you run your application and you find the problem after publishing your application, it's not good. Maybe someone hacked you and I don't know, if you issue or not. This is a very simple one. Maybe sometimes they do. Uh, you, I mean, they take the data and do something else. And this is not good. So, but we activate our application when we are running the debugging. If you use this one in your uh, PyCharm, uh, professional PyCharm, it doesn't work because PyCharm has a lot, because it, it's a virtual environment and has another application offer than that, which doesn't work this one. It's, uh, PyCharm has a high priority than you code here. So I will tell you when I'm uh, doing the exercise, I will tell you where you have to pick which you can run the debugging. But you have to activate the button mode because if you don't activate the button mode, you cannot see the change while you are developing and you cannot see the problem while you are de developing. Okay. So until now, we created a static page. The static page. We didn't use the uh, opportunity of the dynamic page. Here, we wish, we, we would like to create some static page. As in this very good uh, example, when you are going to the Facebook, when you are with your name or your friend name, you can see a slash, I don't know the name, a slash Muhammad, a slash someone else. And for each page, Facebook creates, a, and uh, Facebook is not creating the new page, it's creating the one application, with, the, the name comes, it creates dynamically the HTML page, which is not exist in the past. So how it does this, this activity, it does, it takes the user, this user is a static on this user. After here, when you put in the bracket name, <coughs> this name, it means for routing, this name is a variable. This name is a dynamic variable. So, when in the browser you are writing, I don't know, local has a slash user, is that important? Because it is that you have to write that. But a slash Wardo, it returns, it's Wardo, I mean, this request will handle from the server side and we grab this one and we put in the user function and we return this name with this simple syntax which is a, <coughs> like a print. Return here is a print. So print, it prints this hello, as, um, percentage S, it means a string, which I, I, I can imagine you know from the Python, and we put this name here. So if I write anything here, I will see in my page. I'm not creating 1,000 pages for each person. I'm <coughs> creating one page, one round, and I make this dynamic with this simple syntax. I can put here integer, I can I can limit my variable. If I write something like this variable, it means I am uh, I would wish to get anything plus uh, also a string and other things. Uh, but if I wanted to get float number, integer number, I have to write here something which is int, double, name of the value. And I will show you in the example. We have an example for this exercise. And we get only the, uh, uh, the <coughs> integer number. Someone writes, I don't know, a slash string. I will not I will avoid that one. So that's it, yes, for the, this is the full version. So I have one index and I have also the user. So the debugging mode. For launching the application in PyCharm, uh, you can see one play button <coughs> in the top of the, in the, yeah, in the right top in your application. 
So you can use that call for running the application. But after running, you can see this uh, link. You can access to this link, and the website is here. This part is a port. You can uh, any uh, any web page in web, let's say in web, whole uh, web uh, working usually <coughs> usually on port eight. But you cannot use port eight because you need this block from the CC or other places. It's better to be this port. But my thing is set up on this port. But if, if you wish, you can change it. So we have some context. In the also in the uh, flat context is request context. We have a request context, we have a session, we have a group of context. Uh, and the first one, which is very important, is a request one. The user, when he's writing something to you, like uh, the, the link, I'm saying about the link. Is saying a slash user slash something, when it enters, the automatic browser takes all your uh, all the user data and you tag and it's sent to the, to the server. And you can handle this data. The data, what is the data? The data is the time, data is the user agent, the, the data is uh, some, uh, some uh, l l like a where is he? Uh, what is the IP, what is the language, all this data comes from your browser and goes to the server. And you can handle this data. Here, the most important one is a user agent, which is, it shows to you the, the browser name. What is the browser name? So you can take the data and you can show to, to, to the user here, for example. But uh, also, you can keep this data for the analytics. <coughs> How many users came with the you know, Firefox, how many users came with the uh, Chrome, and you can decide if you wish to program some a specific HTML for the Firefox or some specific HTML for the, for the Chrome, because it's different. They are working in a different way, they have a different version. So sometimes it's not uh, cross platform what you are writing in the HTML. So you have to take care about that part also. Okay, this is exactly the same. So this other context is the current app which shows you what is your app now. Is a G is a global variable because I said your session is a data which uh, you if you wish to save something like a login data, sign up data or something else, you can uh, save in the session because session it's very good as a security because the data is saved in the server, not in the client. If you use Hookie, the data is saved in the local machine of the user. So it's different. So, okay, we have some executing code which, uh, which is important also to use. Sometimes you need to Need, you need, sometimes you uh, force to use this uh, decorator, actually. This is some specific decorator which is reserved for, for the flask. One is a before first request, which does, uh, it doesn't mean uh, it will run after, uh, before the first request coming to the server, like creation of the database. You want to create one time the day, uh, database in your website. You don't want to create each time. So you have to create a model, then the first user event comes, you change the, I mean, you create the database. So this is the reason you can use this. The before request will run for e every every request. I don't know, eh? user one comes, it runs. User two comes, it runs. It runs. doesn't care about the first one. It runs every time for each request. After request, it will run if you don't have any, if you will not have any, uh, uh, you will not have any error, it will run. If, but if you have an error, it will not run, it will show the exception. So 
this is important. And uh, drill down request will run in any case. We run it. You have also the errors. It doesn't care about the, your, your error and exception. Okay, this is exactly what I said. Okay, HTML. Okay. Uh, we have also another concept about the web, which is very related to the HTML, not to the class. It's a re being responsive. Being responsive, it means, or some people say cross platform in the web browser or cross browser, something like this. Uh, responsive, it means it's better to show to your user. Okay, with example is better. Okay, you are going to the website of Polytechnico. Unfortunately, Polytechnico doesn't have a response. This is a very good example. You go to the website of Polytechnico and you see in the web browser, you see okay everything in a, in a place, not very shiny and attractive, but it's a place, it's a place, okay. But when you are going by mobile, you see not the same. Everything damaged. If you go with the Mac, everything is everywhere somewhere else. So it's not a response. It's not responding well to every type of platform, every type of uh, browser, and every type of the size of the screen. So it's not a response. But if you go to Google, you see something else in the page. If you go to the Amazon, you see something else. And they are changing, depending on the user, depending on the size, they check. Okay, my user now uh, comes with the, uh, with the Windows, so they are showing the Windows uh, tags. I mean, because each tag is not possible to work in any, every type of operating system. So, should be take care about who is a Windows, she is a Mac, he is a Linux, and someone else comes with the mobile app. With the tablet, it's important. You have to size it. You cannot tell to the user, sorry, we cannot show to you this website. If you wish, go use, I don't know, Chrome. You see a lot of faces. No, no, we cannot show it. You have to use Chrome. It's not good. It's not pleasant. So it's important, and you can you, uh, be, uh, be responsive if there are some techniques. You have to follow that technique, and you can respond, be responsive. And I will tell you to follow some uh, video in the YouTube, and you can uh, know how it's possible. So, uh, okay. Flex extension or packages. You can install extension or packages on the on the on the flags. One of the most important and useful packages. Uh, one of them is a, is a SQL Alchemy, and other one is the WPF, which is, a, which is uh, helping to create a, create a, uh, forms. Okay. As as you remember, when you you were creating the. Uh, project, you, I, sh I, uh, I told you, you have to take care about the templates pe folder, which you will, you will put your HTML code there. And I said you get a count there and you look for your file and you take your file and you render your uh, your your HTML. But why is it rendering my HTML? Because HTML is the by nature, is a static. You don't need to render it. Yes, if you want to render, render it means compiling. You know compiling. Python is not compiling, uh, compiling label language, but C is a compiler, it's possible to compile. You write a code, after compiling, you have an extra file. You can run every type of this. So, rendering is the same. So, if you render, the old school is HTML. But why I'm writing HTML? It's a question, why? Uh, I have HTML, so why I'm going to take a HTML code and again I want to render HTML code? Does it make sense? But if you remember, I would like to recall, 
I told you we are creating dynamic change. It happens here. So, what we wish to do is we take HTML with some specific tag, some specific value, with the reason I put inside the HTML. I put my little name, blah, 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 blah. But I put only the value of it inside the, my HTML. So if I run this HTML without rendering, I will see some name of the value, nothing else. Then with Jinja, I will come, take this data, and I will take the variable input from the class, and I will mix it, and I will create a new shape for the user. So I will take it and get it, and actually, and I give to the user what he wants. He wants the strawberry, he wants, I don't know, raspberry, anything that he wants. I need to make it. So this is the reason we are rendering. So, uh, Jinja has a, a specific language, of course, but we will give you the information what you need. You don't need to worry about that part. But if you wish to know more, you can Google it and be friendly with Google, so it wouldn't give you any information better than me. So don't worry about that. So this is a way which we wish to give the data to the Jinja. Then Jinja, I will show you what is the page. Jinja renders the page and gives you the data. So here, as you can see, I'm rendering only the page without giving any new information. So if I render this one only, I will see the achievement code which I have. Here, I will uh, render the page. I will render the page. I will mix the page with the new variable, which is a name. Here, this name is a variable, my variable name inside my HTML code. This one is a variable name inside my Python code. So it's different. Here is the same, but can be different. Can be this one something else, can be this one something else. But if you are wishing to print this one, you should be the same. If it's name, any HTML code should be the same. <coughs> Yes, this one is a Python variable. The right the one. The right left one is a uh, HTML variable. Okay, here I changed username. So this one is a HTML. So I will show you. Okay. How you can show the. I mean, this is a. This part is a little bit tricky, but it's easy to understand. Here is the HTML, HTML, HTML. If you put this one, it's all HTML. Ginger come, it will read line by line, come, come, come. Okay, if you see double bracket, it means, okay, I have to put something here from the Python. I will take it. I will take and put here the, the variable, which is, which is here, is a list. It's a list with the key. Okay, I know the key, the name of the, my, my dictionary, the list. Uh, then, I will take all the data, so until here, if I put other things, I will also I will print it. But if I see this one, if you just see again double bracket, close double bracket, it will stop. And again, takes the HTML. If again see this one, it takes the data from the Python and close. Python, close. Python, close. That's it. Then it mix and it gives back to, to the user. So you create a pump HTML. With the many Python variables, class variables, what you call, what we should call. So, this is some uh, some specific function in the in the Jinja which you can use it. Like if you can uh, write capital I after this, okay, you write this dot capitalize. This data will be capitalized. It's easy, very understandable, but only if you know. Okay, some method, if you see here, I try to some method. You can put any method that you want. This is a method. Also, if there are a lot of methods, it's one of them. Okay. 
But what if you wish to have some condition inside the, inside the, your HTML code, which ginger comes and see and makes the condition. Here, as you can see, we can do if, for, and a lot of condition, but it's the most, that's the useful condition, is the most useful condition in the, in the programming language, which I address, but we have other, also, like a while, etc. but if you have these two, you can uh, do your work. So, this is a condition, you can see here, only the difference is bracket, the percentage, percentage, that's it. If user, hello, prints the variable, else, hello stranger, ends. This is good when you want to show, if you want to check if user is exist or not exist. If it exists, show the name. If it's not exist, show the stranger. Okay, the percentage, it means it's a condition. It's a, it's a programming language. Jinja understands it's a programming language. Jinja understands it's a value. Because it's HTML. I put this one in my HTML. Ginger count and read. <coughs> when you read, reach to here, okay, I have to see some 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 programming some programming uh, syntax. So the count if okay, this is an if condition. I take a user, if user is exist, I show this. If not exist, I show this. We will use a lot this type of thing. Is a Python variable. Right. It's not Python. Uh, did you understand? It's a Python variable. Yeah. No, no. It's good. It's important because. Also, here is a for. Simple for, exactly like Python. Only ul, ul, it means list. Here is a syntax. Here is a variable, here for syntax, here for variable, and for. What does it mean? For comment, in comments. <coughs> I have a list of comments. I pass all my comments to the to the to the HTML. And I want to show one by one. How I do I have to do, I have to do it anyway. I have to, I can print all of them by hand. Or I can do one for each line and print one of them. So here I take one comment from this, one by one, it has one comment, here one comment, I print, and I print until the end of the comment. How many pages? Oh. So, put a strap. Five minutes, I will give. So, put a strap. Uh, I don't, I guess I told you, about bootstrap, I don't know, I told you or no in the, in the introduction. Bootstrap is a framework for H, uh, HTML. Actually, not HTML, CSS. But you will use in HTML to formatting your page. It's useful. You can do two ways in HTML. You can write your CSS by yourself or, or you can be stylish. Make your page stylish. If you want to know, like a fashion, it makes very attractive website. Like, uh, again, I don't want to say, but Polytechnic has a very not very good website as a, as a style. But if you go, I don't know, to Polytechnic Milano, really nice website. Really nice website. Because they are using Putesta, but they are not using they, here, they started to develop their website by themselves. They, they used the group of something to put their website. Also, that one is not very, it's a very cheap board, actually. But they did it, and they have very attractive website. This is the difference. You can use Bootstrap. There are a lot of Bootstrap frameworks in the, in the web. But we are using, I guess, yet, Something. I don't remember. Get to the front. If you go to the page, the first one uh, in Google, and I'm using here that one. It gives you some CSS and JavaScript. Also, code. 
and uh, the uh, version 4 I'm using, but you can use also version 3 and 2. And it makes your life easy if you use it. So, but, okay, I think here we give you some information like a very fast information. I know it's a lot of information, but we will try the second part. I, I would like to go and reach to the second part, which is exercise. You can play, you can do something, you can do some handling on your code. So, this is nice. Okay, but what is error handling? <coughs> in your web, in, in the web, there are many errors, of course. Any user comes to your website and wants to go to the s slash item menu, but you don't have any news. There's a two way. Usually, your page shows 404 errors when there is no web in your, I mean, there is no route dedicated to that request. So, what you can do, you can take this error and show a very nice page to the user and say, okay, I, have a, I, I cannot find this page, but you can go to the, I don't know, home page, and we have many, let's say, other information for you like this. You can do like that. So here, you can take the <coughs> error handler, you can for 404, when the error comes, like a not found, a page not found, it takes this one and it will sh you can, if you write this simple code, you can create with this 404 HTML, you have to create by yourself this page, of course. Uh, anything that you want, you can take your style, your layout, and change that one and put your 404 and show, okay, the, the website is not here, uh, the page is not here, but if you want to go, I don't know, to login page, this is a link, and it's like. And there is a 500, which you have to take care about, care about this, this one. This is important. This one is not very important, because, you know, 404, it means there is no page, it's not important, okay. But 500, it means internal server, I saw a lot of websites, they show MySQL error. Because if the, the, the system has an error, it shows immediately the reason. I don't know. I, I, I have a MySQL injection. I have a MySQL connection. The root is not accessible. A lot of things, which is very important as a security issue. So, you have to take care of it. If you don't want to do this, it's not important. But do this one, it's important, it's necessary, it's like, uh, it's important. So you can create this one and show, okay, show, okay, uh, we have, uh, I don't know, at this moment, we cannot serve to you. Please come back later. This is one of the uh, most, let's say, uh, text you can read in a lot of websites. It means they have a problem in the, in the server. But which problem? You don't know. But you can save this data as a text file in the server, then after a while you come and see what is the error coming, and you can track that one and you can fix this. So, okay. The link handling. Let's say a stop here, okay. We stop here, we come back at 10.05, okay? 10.05 we start the second part. Thank you.